So I did it again guys, I bought another Venus flytrap, as you can see over here, this is the old one, this is the new one. And when I was buying the Venus flytrap, I started thinking to myself, hey, what are the best Venus flytraps for kids? Because these are obviously plants that fascinate kids and also a plant that can really help parents teach their kids some form of responsibility. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the best carnivorous plants for kids and a little bit on how to look after them. So stick around. Welcome back to the channel today, guys. I'm sorry if it's a little bit echoey. The doors are all closed because the neighbors are all mowing the lawns, as you heard in the previous clip. So I have to try to keep it like this, a little bit quieter than if everything was open up. So if this is your first time to the channel, this channel is dedicated to the care and cultivation of plants. And we upload a video every single week. We've been growing carnivorous plants for about 11 years now. And I just want to share this with everyone else in the world. So let's jump straight into it. There are many reasons why you may want to get your kid a carnivorous plant. You may want to teach them some responsibility or discipline. It might be an activity that allows you and your child to bond together. Or it might just be because your child really enjoys growing the plants. There's many different reasons and these are just some of them. You will be able to get them to learn how to look after uh, a plant might be a way to lead on to them getting uh, a pet because you have to learn how to water it, look after it, feed it, uh, give it the right requirements, just like you would with the pet. In terms of bonding with the kid, it may be something that you guys can do together to allow yourself to see a progression in growth of a living organism, this organism being a plant, which allows you guys to bond as you guys are both creating something together, which is always something special if you have a kid. And if your kid is obviously interested in it, then obviously your kid is interested in it. They want to get it because it's fascinating. They eat bugs and there's not many plants around the world that do that besides obviously the carnivorous plants. So there are three different reasons why that I've talked about at least you may want to get your child a carnivorous plant. So now that we've covered that, you may be wondering what are the best carnivorous plants to get? Well, you may or may not know this, but there are actually a lot of different genuses of carnivorous plants. So basically a lot of different types of carnivorous plants. You get Nepenthes, Venus flytraps, Drosera, Pinguicula, Aldrovanda, Brachiana, Heliamphora, Darlingtonia, Utricularia. These are just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. There are a lot of different types of carnivorous plants, but many of them also have very specific care needs that you have to follow in order for them to grow well. But I will just give you guys three of the easiest and most well-known ones that you can actually get for your child, which will help you and your child grow them together, where you may be helping them and doing it with them, or you're just supervising, or just something that you'll know will be able to grow well in your environment. So these three genuses are Nepenthes, Venus flytraps, and Drosera. Now, the care for these plants can always be difficult depending on which one you get. As I say, like for example, the Drosera, it's just a genus, right? So you get different types of Drosera, you get different species. But we will be focusing on the easiest ones to grow. So in terms of Nepenthes, it will be Nepenthes ventrata or ventricosa, or just a normal cross that you can get from your local Home Depot. These ones are super easy to look after, and because they are a cross of two different species, it makes it much easier to look after them. In terms of Drosera, the three that I'll be recommending to you is Drosera capensis, Drosera spatulata and Drosera benata. The reason why I say these ones is because benata has a different type of care to the Drosera capensis and Drosera spatulata looks a little bit different to these two. So there's a little bit of, of a variety here, but there are actually quite a few of Drosera that are super easy to care and most of them you can use as a first time carnivorous plant for your child. And Venus flower traps, you get different types of Venus flower traps, but the care for them is basically always the same. There's not many Venus flytraps or if they, or any at all that require very specialized care. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, yes, these are the types of carnivorous plants that I should look at, but which one do I choose? Well, this depends on your environment. Do you have a garden? Do you have no garden, but you have a very sunny window? Do you have a sunroom? Do you live in the tropical belt of the world or do you live in temperate climates? 
or do you live in super cold climates like northern northern Europe or Canada for example uh, tropical zones might include Singapore the islands on the sides of Borneo Malaysia there um, low parts of India like right down in in parts of Brazil and even Florida is quite tropical temperate zones include basically Australia parts of New Zealand uh, some parts of lower Africa where I used to live South Africa uh, most of America um, temperate Europe and then obviously the colder parts which I mentioned earlier so these comes will depict which type of coniferous plants you should get so Nepenthes are tropical plants Venus flytraps are temperate plants and the Drostera that I have spoken about are a mixture between subtropical and temperate. So if you're living in a climate where it's quite warm and it's quite humid all the time and there's a decent amount of sun and light, just like in the tropicals, an appendix is for you because they need pretty good humidity, good light, not strong direct light, but shaded dappled light uh, constantly is best for an appendix to grow well. And if you're living in a tropical climate like this, they're obviously going to be the best ones. You just put them straight outside and they're going to grow perfectly fine. And you just need to water them. That's about it. When you grow the Venus flytrap, the temperate zones are going to be the best. An area that you have lots of sunlight outside, where you can put them in the sun for about eight hours of direct sunlight each day, will be best for a Venus flytrap because they thrive on a lot of sunlight. If you don't have a garden for a Venus flytrap, but you do have some sunny windows, Getting something like a Drosera capensis or Drosera spatulata will be much easier because they are much hardier growers. They will be able to grow on your window, but they might not look as good as if you could grow them right aside in the garden. But because they are such strong growers, this is not very necessary. Drosera bonata is a Drosera that needs to be in a temperate environment too. When I say a temperate environment, I mean that it goes to sleep in winter. So a Venus flytrap will also go to sleep in winter. So your Drosera bonata and a Venus flytrap, if you're living in a climate that gets super cold in winter, those are the ones for you because you can just leave them outside and they'll go to sleep just fine. If you're living in maybe a warmer area, like if you're staying in, for example, Florida maybe, then a subtropical Drosera, such as Drosera capensis or spatulata, will be perfectly fine for you and even a Penthes. So, there is this range that you can look at your growing environments and the plants that you can choose. More humid is the Nepenthes, or more humid and warm is the Nepenthes, going into Drosera capensis, Drosera spatulata. Then if you're in a more temperate region, Drosera bonata and the Venus flytrap. And that's really a good guide that you can use for your kids. So let me make it a little bit more easier for you. Super humid, super tropical environments, Nepenthes, subtropical sort of with a lot of space and lots of light then you can grow Drosera capensis and spatulata you have a lot of light but you're in a temperate area then look at Drosera bonata or a venus flytrap less light look at Drosera capensis Drosera spatulata more light Drosera bonata venus flytrap just normal house light as well nepenthes these will be some easy ways for you to decide which ones you want so now that I have confused you about the different types of carnivorous plants and the growing environments, let's look at the care for each type of carnivorous plant. So this might help you understand a little bit more which carnivorous plants would be best for you and your child in your environment that you can provide. All carnivorous plants require clean water. And what do I mean by that? I mean rainwater, distilled water, reverse osmosis water. There are very few cases where you can actually use your tap water to grow your plant. So for the Venus flytrap and the Drosera, you want to have a bowl and the pots of the cannabis plants in this bowl and you just fill up the bowl with some water. And that's all you're going to do to look after them. Once the water in the bowl has finished, you literally just fill it back up with this clean water again. For the Nepenthes, what you want to do is that you want to water it every one to three days, depending on the media. You want the soil to be moist, not wet. So what do I mean by moist? You pour water in, you see the water drain out, you leave it. If the water, if the top layer of the pot is dry the next day, water it again. If it's not dry the next day, you just wait and wait and wait until the top layer is a little bit wet and you can just water from the top again. Now let's start with the Nepenthes. The Nepenthes require good humidity, warm, warm temperatures just like normal room temperatures and dappled light. That means you can grow the plant on a south facing window or an east facing window so they can get some good light 
and they will be able to grow just fine inside of your house. You can look at Nepenthes around the house. This is a good website that will allow you to determine ways to grow your Nepenthes inside of your house. Now we will look at Drosera. Drosera do require a lot of light, but the spatulata and capensis that I've spoken about can be grown indoors if you have a south facing if you're in the northern hemisphere or a north facing if you're in the southern hemisphere window. This means that these windows will get a lot of light and spatulata and capensis can grow just perfectly fine in these window sills. As I said, just sit them in your bowl, put them by the window, that's basically all you need to worry about. When, there's, when they start flowering, I would recommend you cut the flower off because they're not getting a lot of light. So they may use all their energy when they are growing their flower stalks and they're living inside. If you have a garden and you have lots of sunlight, then definitely get spatulata or capensis. Just put them out in the garden, full sunlight, and just water them like normal. Once the water level has gotten low, literally fill it back up with water, that's what you need to worry about. If you're living in a little bit of a colder climate and you do have a garden, then it will be best for you to get the Venus flytrap or the Bonata. They both basically live in the exact same type of environment, um, even though they're from different parts of the world. By environments, I mean they both go to sleep in winter. When it gets super cold in winter, they go to sleep, they go dormant in a little bud underground, and when it comes to springtime, they grow again out of this bud. So therefore, if you do have a garden, just get a Venus flytrap or a Drostra bonata, put them there, and as I said, water it, just like you would with any other other canvas plants. When the water level has dropped, fill it back up. When winter comes around and they start going to sleep, water them a little bit less. Once the water tray has lost any, all the water inside of it, leave about one to two days in between the watering, just fill it back up, and that's all you have to worry about. I hope that this has given you a little bit of a guide into which plants that you can get for your child. It is a little bit more of a complex video because we have to cover different growth care for different plants. But I will also be providing specific care guides for each specific uh, species of carnivorous plants that I spoke about today. So if you want to, make sure to subscribe because then you will be able to see these videos once I bring them up. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like as it just really helps out the channel a lot. If you feel like this didn't help you, then you probably are not watching the video anymore. So thank you for watching and yeah, I hope that you will be able to find the right kind of plant for your child and for yourself. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment or you can private message me on any one of these social media apps. Even email me if you really want. I'm happy to help you. And yeah, thank you. Have a good day.